Hello everyone, now I will discuss about the anatomy of anal canal. In this section, I will be explaining its features, relations, interior of anal canal, blood supply, nerve supply, lymphatic drainage and clinical relevance. So, the first figure what you are seeing is the sagittal view of uh, female pelvis. Okay. This is the anterior aspect. So this is the posterior aspect. Okay. So in the posterior, you can see this is the sacrum, sacral vertebrae. The lower, you can see this is the coccygeal uh, vertebrae, forms the coccyx. Okay. Here, uh, in the last section also, I explained about the rectum. You know the location of the rectum. So this is the rectum. The lower dilated part of the rectum, this is called the rectal ampulla. Okay. So, this rectal ampulla narrows and forms this, that is the anal canal. So, so anal canal is the terminal part of this uh, large intestine, okay, where the rectal ampulla narrows. Okay. Then, here you can see, here this opens into the exterior, here as anal orifice. So, here the exterior, you can see this is the anal orifice. Okay. Its length is 3.8 centimeter. Okay. It passes, see it passes downwards and backwards. Okay. Then, then next, in the next, in this figure also, this is the sagittal a view of the male pelvis okay here you can see this is the rectum so this is the anal canal this is the opening ex to the exterior that is the anal orifice so this is the sacrum you can see see this is the coccyx okay so this anal orifice lies four centimeter below and in front of the tip of the coccyx okay then here also you can see this uh, junction. This is the anorectal junction. So it begins from the anal anorectal junction, then opens as anal orifice. Then next is the relations. Here what you are seeing, this is the sagittal view. This you can see this is the male pelvic organs. Okay, here this is the anterior, this is the posterior. This is the sacrum, this is the coccyx, yellow colored area that is the anacoccygeal raphe. Okay, so this is the rectum, this is the rectal ampulla, dilated part. This is the anorectal junction. Okay, then anterior to that, you can see this is the pubic symphysis. This is the urinary bladder, see the urinary bladder. The red color structure that is the prostate. Below the prostate, we'll get the urogenital diaphragm. It's made up of uh, muscles. Then below that, inferior to that, we'll get the bulb of penis. Okay. So anterior of the anal canal relates to the prostate, this urogenital diaphragm, and this is the bulb of the penis. And also this green color structure, this is the perineal body. These are the anterior relations. Posteriorly, this is the coccyx and the anocoxygen rough okay then here you can see this is the sagittal view of the female pelvis okay this is the anterior you can see this is the pipic symphysis this is the posterior part okay this is the sacrum with the coccyx you can see this is the rectum okay this part is the anal canal structures relate to anteriorly are this is the vagina this is the urethra. Okay, here the female pelvic organs. This is the fundus of the uterus. This is the cervix. This is the vagina. This is the vaginal orifice. This is the urinary bladder, urethra, urethral orifice. This part, this is the labium majus and this is the labium minus. So anterior lesions are the vagina. Then the urethra, pubic symphysis. Posteriorly, this is the coccyx and the anacoxygen raphe. These are the relations in males and females. Okay. In both okay, lateral relations are on each side, the anal canal is related to here. 
here you can see this is the inner canal here it's already labeled each sides it's related to space this region is called the ischio rectal fossa or ischio anal fossa so each side of the anal canal is related to the ischio anal fossa okay that will explain in detail in next section then coming to the interior of the anal canal okay so interiorly you can see what you're seeing this is the mucous part okay this is the mucosa okay here this is the rectum rectum is already labeled here rectum this is the anorectal junction this part is the anal canal this is the anal canal okay it is divided into three zones okay there is the upper this is the upper part this is the middle part and this is the lower part by means of pectinate and uh, white lines or hilton slime okay so interiorly the mucosa consists of three zones there is the upper part middle and lower part we'll see in detail so this is the upper muscular part okay here here this is the coronal view okay so this is the anorectal junction this is the upper muscular part this area it is 15 mm in length okay the mucosa consists of numerous longitudinal folds see the longitudinal folds here are called the anal columns of morgagni so you can see numerous longitudinal folds some 6 to 10 folds are called these are called the anal columns of morgagni okay see below this uh, lower part of the longitudinal folds some show some crescentic folds these are called the anal valves okay so these are the crescentic folds are called the anal valves so this is the anal valve this is the anal columns or morgagni okay then the space above the anal valve this is called the sinus so these are the anal sinus the space above the anal valves are called the anal sinus then numerous some glands uh, opens into the anal sinus okay so upper part consists of longitudinal mucosal folds are called anal columns of morgagni crescentic folds slower are called the anal valves the spaces above the anal valves are called the anal sinus okay then addition to that see in this figure this anal valves are connected by a transverse line here it's mentioned with that yellow color that is called the pectinate line or dentate line is important okay the lower part of the anal valves are traversed by a continuous line that is called the pectinate line okay that's about like the upper muscular part then next is the intermediate area or the pecten this is the pecten this is also 15 mm in length okay so this part the lining epithelium is stratified as squamous uh, non keratinized the upper part lining epithelium is stratified columnar okay the middle part or the area pecten lined with stratified squamous non keratinized deep to that mucosa there are numerous rectal venous plexus giving that area a bluish pink appearance okay and that's all about the intermediate part okay then this is the lower part the middle part and lower part are separated by a faint white line that is called the white line or hilton's line that is called the hilton's line okay here we will get the pectinate line remember that is the region area of the pectinate line here this is the white line or hilton's line okay then next is the lower part see here in this figure you can see this is the this is the lower part the lower part is lined with the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium with numerous uh, such glands and sebaceous glands hairs are there okay it's pigmented okay then its uh, length is 8 mm okay that's about the uh, 
interior of the anal canal it consists of three zones upper middle and lower upper part is called the mucous or muscular part middle part is the pectern lower part is the anal foch then next is the anal musculature okay here this is the this is also the coronal view one side you can see okay here Okay, this is the anorectal junction, this is the pectinate line, this is the, here we'll get the white line or Hilton's line, okay. Then, see this is the part, this part is the rectum. The rectum, this, this is the muscle layer of this rectum, consists of inner circular, this part is the inner circular, this is the outer longitudinal. This inner circular, this one forms this internal anal sphincter that you can see in the upper two thirds of the anal canal. It is made up of smooth muscle. This is the internal anal sphincter. Okay. Then, extended to the internal anal sphincter, here you can see this is the external anal sphincter. See, this is the external anal sphincter. This I already told this is the anorectal junction. Here it will get one muscle. This one, this is the levatory. Eh? Okay. Then below, they will get this uh, external anal sphincter. It has three parts. This is the subcutaneous part. This is the superficial part. And this is the deep part of the external anal sphincter. It is uh, made up of skeletal muscle. So it is voluntary. And its nerve supply is through the inferior rectal nerve. Internal anal sphincter is made up of smooth muscle. It is involuntary through this uh, autonomic nerve. That is through the sympathetic and parasympathetic. So that about the sphincters. Okay. Then additional to that, in this figure, you can see the conjoint fibroelastic sheath. Okay. So this is the rectal muscles in a, in a circular and the outer longitudinal. See, this is the inner circular outer longitudinal. This is the muscles of the rectum. This inner circular forms this uh, internal anal sphincter. This outer longitudinal and this levator in a muscle here forms the conjoint this is the conjoint fibroelastic sheath okay here it forms some septa towards medially that is called the anal intermuscular septum and towards laterally that is called the perianal fascia towards inferiorly it forms numerous septa that forms the corrugated cutis ani that about this conjoint fibroelastic sheath that is the inner so outer longitudinal and levator ANA. This is the outer longitudinal and this levator ANA forms this conjoint fibroelastic sheath. Okay. And that's all about the musculature of rectum. That it puts the inner here also you can see this is the internal anal sphincter, external anal sphincter, and conjoint fibroelastic sheath. External anal sphincter. Here we'll get the conjoint fibroelastic sheet. Okay. That's about the musculature of anal canal. Then in this figure, what you're seeing, this is the perineum. Okay. Here this is the inferior view, perineum. You can see this is the anal orifice. Okay. Here we'll get the external anal sphincter, which helps in the opening and closure of this uh, orifice, which controls the orifice. Okay. Then, coming to its blood supply. Okay. So interior, you have seen two lines are there: pectinate line and this uh, white line of Hilton. Pectinate line is the part between this uh, upper zone and middle zone, lower part of the anal valves. Here again, here the longitudinal folds will be there in the upper zone that are called the anal columns. Their crescentic folds in the lower part of the anal columns forms this anal valves. The anal valves are connected by there is a transverse line that is called the. This is the pectinate line okay so this pectinate line this pectinate line act as a watershed line that means the part above the pectinate line and below the pectinate line are different in its blood supply its nerve supply and lymphatic drainage due to the difference in the embryological origin so part above the pectinate line develops from this endoderm part below the pectinate line develops from the ectoderm 
then coming to this arterial supply here this is the green color area that is the pectinate line this is the rectum this part is the anal canal okay the part above the pectinate line the arterial supply is through the superior rectal artery below the pectinate line that is through the inferior rectal artery okay then venous drainage okay venous drainage here the part above the pectinate line that is through the here this is the superior rectal veins part below the pectinate line this is the green color zone that is the pectinate line below the pectinate line uh, the uh, part of the anal canal drains into this inferior rectal vein then it too finally drains into the internal pudendal vein additional to that here you can see there is the internal rectal venous plexus and the external rectal venous plexus the superior middle and inferior rectal veins form this rectal venous plexus okay that plexus we seen interior to the mucosa that is the outside in the submucosa that forms the internal rectal venous plexus outside of the muscular cord the venous plexus forms the external rectal venous plexus okay so this is the this um, green color area that is the pectinate line it act as the watershed line this is the watershed line due to the difference in embryological origin the part above and below are different have each own artery supply blood supply and nerve supply then coming to its lymphatic drainage here in this figure you can see here the part above the pectinate line is drains into this internal iliac nodes internal iliac node below the pectinate line drains into the superficial inguinal nodes below the pectinate line to the superficial inguinal nodes above the pectinate line to the internal iliac nodes then now supply now supply above the pectinate line to this autonomic that is through the sympathetic and parasympathetic sympathetic is through l1 and l2 segments parasympathetic is through the s2 s3 and s4 segments okay then below the pectinate line that is through the inferior rectal nerve okay that is pain sensitive that area is pain sensitive then coming to the applied aspects okay there are hemorrhoids or piles okay there are uh, sometimes there will be the formation of this hemorrhoids or piles okay there are two types that is the internal hemorrhoids or internal piles or the external hemorrhoids the external piles okay. so i already described about the superior and inferior rectal venous plexus okay or the superior or uh, that is the Uh, internal rectal venous plexus see here we'll get the internal rectal venous plexus here we'll get the external rectal venous plexus okay this is the superior middle and inferior rectal veins forms this plexus the superior rectal also the internal rectal venous plexus you can see in the mucosa this external rectal venous plexus you can see outside the muscular part of the anal canal sometimes due to this excessive pressures this uh, mucosa this venous plexus thickens to forms the anal cushions in the mucosa this anal cushions dilates and ruptures forms the internal hemorrhoids or internal piles okay and also due to this excessive pressure during defecation the external rectal venous plexus dilates and ruptures forms the external hemorrhoids or piles Okay. that's about the internal hemorrhoids and external hemorrhoids okay this there is a white line there which separates the middle zone from the lower zone okay so the internal hemorrhoids you can see usually above the white line or the hilton's line that is painless the external hemorrhoids you can see normally can see below the white line or the hilton's line that is painful we know that nerve supply is through the inferior rectal nerve is pain sensitive okay so that's all about the internal and external hemorrhoids internal hemorrhoids are due to the formation that that is due to the rupture and dilations of this internal rectal venous plexus 
okay external hemorrhoids due to this uh, external rectal venous plexus dilates and ruptures forms then in this figure also you can see here there is the internal hemorrhoid see this is the external hemorrhoid here this is the white line or hilton's line you can see okay see in this figure also there is the external hemorrhoid the dilation and ruptures of this uh, external rectal venous plexus forms the subcutaneous hematoma and these forms the external hemorrhoids see this is the internal hemorrhoid internal rectal venous plexus dilates and ruptures the mixed hemorrhoid is sometimes there okay that you can see in the whole length of this anal canal then that's all about the anatomy of the anal canal in this section we all discussed the uh, relations interior of anal canal its musculatures okay then its uh, blood supply nerve supply and lymphatic drainage and about the hemorrhoids or the piles okay see you should know this important this is the pectinate line this is the hilton's line this is the internal anal sphincter this is the external anal sphincter okay this is the interior you can see this is the upper zone this is the middle zone this is the lower zone upper zone you can see there are the anal columns anal sinus anal valves are there okay. so above the pectinate line this area this act as the pectinate line act as watershed line above and below this embryological by means of the embryological origin uh, it's it's different then hope you understood then you should write answer for this that is the describe the anal canal under the following headings that is about the interior of anal canal its relations anal sphincters blood supply and applied anatomy actually the anal canal is important it can ask for a long ac or short knot okay the interior of anal canal is more important and you should know the pectinate line and its significance okay thank you